Hey YouTubers, 95 Speed GTA. I really never did a full video on uh, my Altima. You guys have seen my Sentra and my Caravan. Um, but tonight, uh, we're going to start preparing for the winter. And I'm going to be taking off my 20 inch rims on my 2008 Nissan Altima. And I'm going to be putting the factory steel 16 inch rims back on. I know it kind of sucks. I wish I had maybe 16 inch um, aluminum rims or something nicer than steel rims, but I really don't know for sure how this car handles in the winter time and I'm pretty sure that 20 inch rims on a car in the snow is really not a good idea as far as traction goes. And not only that, these are really expensive rims. Uh, the rims and tires alone were about $2,000. And believe it or not, the tires were more expensive than the rims. Those are Pirelli P0s. And the dimensions and the size of the tires are actually the same exact tires that are on the Porsche 911. So I really don't want to beat them up for the winter time. So I'm going to show you guys some tips about changing your tires, some things you can do. Uh, some things you shouldn't do and uh, just basically make a video on my Altima. So here we go. So here are the uh, wheel covers that I'm going to be putting on. They're actually not identical but they're pretty similar to the 20 inch rims that I have on now. They kind of have a similar pattern. They're black with a, with a chrome lip around them. There are my steel tires. Really nothing to uh, brag about or look into what I really should have done before uh, I decided to tackle this last minute is I should have did what I did with my Sentra and that was uh, sand these wheels down, clean them up and repaint them black uh, with some gloss on it but whatever it's just gonna be a couple of months until I put the 20s back on in the summertime. Here are my original wheel covers for the car I actually like these a lot and uh, I'm going to give the new 16 inch uh, wheel covers a chance. One of the reasons why I like using these Nissan wheel covers is that before you, um, before you put the lug nuts on, you actually set these up around the uh, wheel studs. And when you put the lug nuts on, the lug nuts actually hold the wheel cover to the wheel. So they're not the prettiest things in the world, but before I when I when I was buying the car I actually thought for a second that the car had uh had alloy rims on it. Um but this is a lot a lot a lot better than the um the aftermarket replacements because there's no ring, there's no tension ring that holds these on and the lug nuts hold them on so you never have to worry about losing them. Uh my Sentra I actually went through three sets of wheel covers already because they just keep falling off. It's not because you install them incorrectly or anything like that. It's just if you make a sharp turn, you hit a pothole or whatever, you know, that's it. The only thing holding these guys in is tension. And the tension is just a ring. <laughs> but uh, these are it, and these are what I'm going to be putting on, and I'm going to see how they work out. I lose them, I lose them. If I don't, I don't. I always have the factory ones to go to. So, let's get started. Alright, so, it's about 41 degrees outside right now. I'm in my double insulated jumpsuit, and uh, things are good. I'm not freezing or anything like that. One thing I do suggest to you guys that if you want to work in the fall to winter time, and you don't have an inside shop or a garage, and you just have a carport like I do, I would invest in one of these double insulated um, jumpsuits. So, uh, they're also known as a onesie or whatever but it keeps you warm. I'm underneath this I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. So what I'm doing tonight is I'm taking my aftermarket 20 inch rims off my 2008 Ultima for the winter. The reason why I'm doing this is like I said before traction and not only that they're really nice black rims and I don't want them destroyed. So these rims have three security features on them and that's why I like them a lot because it'll de it'll deter theft and I don't have to worry about my investment being stolen. Um, so the tools that I need tonight and what you should invest in is wheel locks. Now here's the one tool that I use. This is for my wheel locks. It, they're not like traditional lug nuts. Uh, they're actually cylindrical and uh, they have a um, I I think it's called a, they called it, it's called a spline drive, 
and uh, the, those are the type of lug nuts that I have on the car and the only way you can remove them is with this key um, so tonight I'm gonna be using the key I'm gonna be using a 3 8 ratchet with an extension I'm gonna be using my Allen keys and a torque wrench torque wrench is really important uh, when you're putting new rims on changing out a tire or anything you want to torque your wheels and what I mean by torquing your wheels is you want to torque the lug nuts that are going back on your wheel and you want to do them in a pattern which I'll show you the reason why you want to use a torque wrench and if you don't have one I strongly suggest you invest in one because you could use this for so many different automotive repairs and it's a multi-purpose use tool you won't be using it to just tighten tires um, but you want to have a torque specification each car is different they're usually between 100 and 150 foot pounds depending on the car sometimes even beyond depending on the car um, but torquing down your lug nuts assures the fact that your wheel is going to stay on the car uh, sometimes people's strength is a lot different so uh, my feeling of a nut being tight will be different from somebody in their 50s or 60s or somebody that's my age that's a lot weaker than me so it's always good to have this because once you reach the specified torque that you're supposed to have this makes a clicking sound and, it, and you know you did your job I'm not using any air tools tonight so I'm going to be using my crossbar the thing I'm going to be using is a window marker this is pretty much the stuff you use when you sell your car you know you write the year making model it's kind of like a washable paint and what I'm using this for is to mark the tires when I take the tires off the rims and I store them I'm gonna mark them accordingly so when I put them back on the car I'm not putting the driver side rear tire over by the passenger side front tire you don't want to do that because then one if your tires are rotational tires you can't do that and two you don't want to ruin your treads and you will ruin your treads if you mis mismatch sorry if you mismatch them like that if you don't have this and you don't want to get it get yourself some tape you could use painters tape or duct tape and a marker and you just marker you just mark them but make sure that you wipe your wheels off with a cloth of any kind of debris or anything because the tape won't stick and don't buy the cheap shit dollar store pa uh, dollar store uh, tape because I found that the dollar store duct tape does not stick for anything. So now that we got everything in order, oh, one more thing I wanted to show you: a tub of grease, a tub of grease, and you take a razor blade, cut out a rectangle or a square, and get an old paintbrush and stick it right in. Why would I do that? I'm going to show you. Well, I'll show you in a little while. Let's work on getting this rim off. All right, so taking the actual rim off my car is a lot more involved than you would think. It's not just taking off these five lug nuts. Now, not every rim is the same. These are all different. But mine in particular has quite a few steps you have to go through to get the lug nuts, to even get to the lug nuts and then take the wheel off the car. First, of course, you have this center cap that goes here, and it's accompanied by a Torx uh, bolt that actually locks this into place, which you have to remove. And there was a lot of torque behind that that you have to remove. There you go. And then you got these chrome fingers. This is what I really liked about the rims because when I bought the rims, the rims came with either these chrome fingers or black ones just to totally black out the whole rim. I felt it was too much black, so I opted to put these on. But these go right here, and they go around here, 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 and there. And these two are accompanied by two torques. Um, and these here are accompanied by two Torx bolts in which you have to get off. So just to take the wheel off the car, you have to have more tools than just a lug nut wrench. And also it takes probably about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, just five to 10 minutes just to get the things off. So now that we did that, I'm gonna go around the rest of the car um, and I'm gonna be 
I'm going to be going around the rest of the car and I'm going to be removing the uh, the little vanity centerpiece, vanity slash security piece. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack all of the lug nuts loose. I'm not going to take them off because the car is still, still down on the ground and you don't want to take them off while doing that. All you want to do is just crack them loose a little bit because you can't have the car lifted up in the air and uh, you know try to crack them loose unless you know you put the parking brake on or you know something like that but it's easier just to do it on the ground. Sure. Here's some jacking points. Um, this is something that you're gonna have to do. Um, some of you may not want to do it because it's a little bit of a pain in the ass but if you can it just makes things easier so you can do both back wheels in one shot right underneath the middle of the car I'm gonna see if I can get some good light right there there's gonna be oh, there's gonna be a hump that's uh... The, that's the bottom of your suspension um... you can't... that's a lifting point you can lift it up there which raises the ass of the car so you don't have to do one wheel individually but it also really depends on what kind of jack you have I have a Thorolast jack and this is a brand new jack so it's very sensitive to uh, you know when you pump it and everything like that. The only thing is, <laughs> look how far underneath the car it is. So it does hit the bumper when you're trying to jack it up. So like for the first like 20 seconds of me jacking the car up, it was like this. So what you do is when you place your jack under the car. Place it right where the spare tire, um, the spare tire storage is, and jack it up till just about maybe maybe an inch before it hits this, and then push the jack in. And when you push the jack in, it's going to go right underneath. You'll see it. It's going to go right underneath uh, the hump of the rear suspension. And then once you do that, all you're only going to go these little like quarter pumps. You're only going to be doing that just for a little bit because then you're going to see the vehicle raise and then I had it up in no time. But for those of you who don't want to do it that way, I'm going to show you another lift point. Just to get situated right here. These cars have what is called pinch welds. Actually, all cars pretty not well. <laughs> we'll stick it to the Nissan. The Nissan has a lift point which is right there it's right there on the pinch welds you can put your jack underneath it and you can lift it up and you can do them one tire at a time if that's the way you want to do it um, if you look over all the way in the end there's your uh, rocker panel cover do not ever jack it up on there or you're going to be buying a new one and going to the body shop so you want your lift point to be right there you just want to find a good sturdy piece of metal which is either that pinch weld which is right there or that little flat spot right there or if you can get your jack right under there and lift it up that would be fine too make sure that you chalk the front wheels put something in front of the wheel like a brick or an actual wheel chalk so that the car doesn't roll forward even though it's got a parking pin you just want to be safe about it alright so has anybody wondered why I have that tub of grease yet or if you just started watching uh, here's a little tub of red grease that I have. I'm going to show you guys why I have this out in a minute. But first, we're going to, now since we cracked these loose originally, since it's up in the air, we just, we're just we going to spin them out. And I'm not going to reuse these lug nuts. Um, these are what I was telling you before. These are called spline drive lug nuts, and they're security lug nuts. Um, I got a new set of lug nuts that's similar to this, but it's not spline drive. Oh, these are quite heavy. And I want to show you guys something. If you ever look at aftermarket rims, I want to show you guys something about aftermarket wheels. Have you ever looked at aftermarket wheels or purchased aftermarket wheels and really don't know too much about them but wondered why they have so many holes? Well, this is for multi-vehicle use. I could These are universal rims. I could take them and I can put them on my 1999 Dodge Caravan my 2007 Nissan Sentra 
my Altima, which they're on now, and practically almost any lug nut pattern on a vehicle. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. This is, if you ever see this, why it has so many lug nut holes, that's why. Okay, so this is pretty much a prime example on why I tell you to mark your tires before you put them away for storage or whatever the case may be. I know very little about these tires because I exchanged them for the 20s um, in the summertime and I thought I had made some kind of a marking or whatever but obviously I didn't but uh, here's a way to help. Um, these tires aren't really too old on, on the car and it has as you can see a lot of tread life left in it. A good way to tell on whether or not a car tire has come from the front of the vehicle or the rear of the vehicle is to look at the treads. Now you want to look at the treads from the outside. So here's the front of the rim and I'm talking about right here up that edge. You see it? Usually tires that have been placed on the front of the vehicle they'll have a more right here, a more rounded down uh, edge than the backs would. Because you got to remember the back tires, they're only trailing tires. They're only going straight. They're not making any turns or anything like that. So as you can see, this tire pretty much, well, they are fairly new, but this tire doesn't have any of that wear. Where you see here on the edge, it's worn down. And I'll actually get one of the front tires and I'll show you. Uh, the only thing I do know for sure about the front tires is I had a blowout and one of my tires blew and it was the passenger side front and that's the only tire with a different brand than the rest these are all BCT tires but my front passenger one's a Goodyear so <clears throat> I know this is from the back I just don't know which side so I'm hoping that that's not going to be a big deal probably not because it's the back because it's the back tire and the front tires I already have figured out so All right, so pretty much here we are with the rear um, driver's side tire and rim taken off and we have the rotor and the wheel studs exposed. So now, the whole tub of grease thing. Have you ever tried to take a rim off a car and you, you undid all the lug nuts but the damn thing would not move and you had to kick the hell out of it or even whack the rubber side of the tire a couple of times with a hammer until it came off or a big mallet or something. There's a reason behind that. Um, the rotors here, they're steel and your rims, primarily aluminum rims, they do this more than steel rims. I have had some steel rims do this but this is primarily a problem with aluminum rims is the differences in metal. Steel to aluminum compressed together for a long time, they actually pretty much fuse themselves on. And that's why if you've ever taken these off, it's a real pain in the ass um, to get the, the actual rim off of this. So there's a way to go around it, and that's where the grease comes in. Now what you want to do is, uh, like I said, um, if you're just coming into this, you cut yourself out a square or a rectangle, and uh, you get yourself an old paintbrush and you just stick it in and keep this grease inside especially when it gets uh, cold outside because then this stuff is very difficult to work with but basically all you do is you take your paintbrush you go around the middle part because the middle part is now for steel rims the middle part this is kind of where it bonds is right here in the center so you just want to go around it very lightly you don't have to go crazy um, and somebody has painted these rotors before so I don't know maybe the previous owner or something like that and then you know you just pass over the wheel studs give it a little coating of grease is always good but you just do that and just by let me get the little webs <laughs> um, and I, I kinda went overkill a little bit but it's not a big deal and just by doing that you'll never ever have a problem taking off your aluminum or steel rim ever again. So now with that done, now we got the wheel off, we can take the time to look into a couple of things like the conditions of our shocks, springs, brakes, brake pads and such. 
which it looks like I'm gonna be due for rear pads real soon. Probably like a little more into the winter. I wish I would have known I would have picked them up. And it, and also you could take a look at your rotors. Like this rotor right here, I could tell just by feeling it that it needs to be cut because it's a little warped. But in due time, in due time. So now we're gonna put the first steel the first steel rim on. Oh, and by the way, I just want to show you guys a little something. Um, if you don't want to kill your back and your knees, there's a there's a really easy way to put the tire on, uh, the wheel studs, and that's basically to sit right in front of the tire, and you put the bottom of the tire, the uh, seven o'clock and five o'clock positions, right down here. You put your left and right hand on the three and nine o'clock position, and you lift up. Let me just get a little closer. And you lift up, and right now the tire's suspended on your left and right knee, which the tire's really not that heavy. And what you do is you can use your hands while they're on the 3 and 9 o'clock position, and you just place the tire, you should find the lug nuts, uh, the studs, you just place the tire on the rim, and it just makes it really easy. Like, have you ever bent over? And especially with some rims, like on my 95 Grand Prix, it has those gold honey honeycomb rims where like it's not like this to where once you get the rim on, you could actually see where the wheel studs are or whatever. They're a pain in the ass, especially if you're not sitting down right in front of them, just to find the studs and to push it through the rim. So I just found it really easy to sit right in front of it and just use your legs and your arms. Your legs are doing most of the work. And you just put it on and you could hold it there with your legs you could put you could screw the lug nuts on because some rims once you mount them up like this and if nothing's holding it as soon as you let off that's what happens and it screws up your whole operation so I just put it on then if you don't want to use the crossbar while you're sitting down and we're putting the factory hardware back on so this is the factory lug nut it's a 21 millimeter I would not use a 3 8 a 3 8 ratchet or 3 8 socket. Um, if you're using all hand tools and you're going to be using your uh, breaker bar and torque bar and torque wrench to put these on, 21 millimeter on a half inch drive, half inch socket. So we're going to screw these on. And here's my McDonald bag full of the original hardware. So basically, we're just, I'm not using the spline drives. Um, next season when I put my rims back on like I said I have a new new set of uh, lug nuts that I want to use as security ones so we're gonna go ahead and put these on and do the rest of the wheels now if you're going ahead and you're putting the rest of these lug nuts on if you're gonna go put this on and you start to turn it and you turn it clock clockwise and you start to feel that there's a problem like it's getting too tight or it's not going on correctly Take it off and take a look at the inside. Nine times out of ten, what happens with these things is it gets dirty and contaminated inside. Or there's a thread problem. And if there's a thread problem, you could do one of two things. One, you could knock the thread off. That's something I really don't recommend doing because if you if the process involves in doing it, you might as well just punch it through and buy yourself a new wheel stud. They're cheap enough. I think they're like 50 or 75 cents each. But uh, worst case scenario, which this is the problem, if you run into that, take a look inside. Now, I can't, even if you were right next to me, I can't really give you a close up. But if you look inside here, you can see all the dirt and contamination. You want to wash this out, clean it up, and spray a little bit of oil in there because that'll wind up screwing up your threads. Don't ever force anything on. Okay, so now we're at the part where we got all five lug nuts on. Um, we're gonna take our 21 millimeter, or we're gonna take our crossbar, which is also a 21 millimeter, and uh, with the car still up in the air, we're not gonna tighten them. Well, we're not gonna torque them to what we're supposed to, because the car's up in the air. But what we're gonna do is we're just going to snug the lug nuts onto the wheel so that when we drop the car it's firmly pressed up against the brake rotor and there's not going to be any oh the brake drum 
and there won't be any problems. There won't be any gaps in between the brake rotor and the wheel. You don't want that. So if you're still sitting down like I am, you take your knees, you just press your knees like you're squeezing, like you're squeezing up against the tire, and you just turn them. There's no sequence yet, but when we do final torquing, there actually is a sequence. And you just tighten these up. So then we can put the car on the ground and we can tighten them properly. So that's one wheel done. Let's get the rest of them done. This is the easiest part now. The hardest part in doing this job was taking the aftermarket 20 inch rims off because of all the security crap on them. It's sad that we have to do that, but a lot of people unfortunately like to steal. A lot of people like taking something that doesn't belong to them and they didn't earn. So you gotta protect your stuff, whether it be an alarm system, three different lug nut patterns, and security bolts to keep your wheels on, or an iTech surveillance system in your car like a dash cam or some other type of surveillance system to keep you keep people out of your car, or at least track down who tried to take the stuff out of your car. Those twenty inch rims that I had I had somebody already try to steal them from me. They were working on the front, the front right tire, and what they didn't know is they were being video recorded the whole time. Um, I'm missing one of my fingers, one of the um, chrome fingers on there, because they got as far as to taking off one of the chrome figure, fingers, and I guess they got vulnerable or they were going to get caught or something like that, and they just took off. So that's it. a little in the way. Now, the reason why I'm going so crazy about telling you about the tires and everything like that, it's because it's because of placement and also because of wear. Um, sometimes when you mix match tires and you put a back tire, a back right rear tire in a left front, it just destroys the tread because the tread on the tire and the tire is supposed to wear a certain way. So now if you take the used tire and you switch the rims around and you put a you put a, a a right rear tire on a left front tire you'll see you'll notice that the the treads will just get eaten up um but the reason why I'm stressing this is all because of wear tires are not cheap they're relatively expensive and you want to get the most time out of your tread life as you can so when if any of you out there are doing what I'm doing, the best thing for you to do is to mark your tires when you take them off for the winter and vice versa for the summertime. Because it's it's just it's it's basically it's an issue of wear and you you don't want them to prematurely wear. You want to get the most time you can out of them. You also want to rotate your tires every 3 to 5000 miles. So every oil change or every three, every five thousand miles, you want to re, um, you want to have your tires rotated. The reason why you want to have your tires rotated is if you leave the, let's say, the front, the front wheels, you leave your front tires on for too long in the front. Those are the tires that take the most of the abuse. Front wheel drive cars, that's where the drive line is. That's where all the power goes. You make a left turn, right turn. You know, your kid takes it and he's flooring it going left and right. Or, you know, just, you get the gist. The front tires take... Somebody flushed the toilet. The front tires take the most abuse. And the reason why we rotate tires is just for wear. If you never, re if you never, if you never, um... If you never rotated the tires, you'd burn out the front tires and have really good back tires. Uh, the whole point of it is just to extend the life of all four tires and they all wear evenly without any uneven wear. You'll also get the most life out of your tires and when I mean by tires I mean a set of tires that's a set of four not a set of two. You keep rotating them you'll be replacing your tires for what they're rated for as long as you know normal driving habits permit but whether it's three years of 50,000 miles or 60,000 miles you'll get that mileage out of them but you need to rotate them 
So pretty much you see why I'm going over every detail. Some people may think, oh yeah, that tire is bullshit. It's not. And I've noticed on YouTube that on a lot of channels, when people explain certain things like tires, transmissions, engines, air conditioning, what have you, it's not fully explained. Now, I pretty much explain all my videos to the point where if you never ever touched a tire before, if you never ever touched a car before, and you feel confident enough and you watch my video, you'd be confident enough after watching the video to take it upon yourself. I haven't seen anybody say, okay, well, if you ever have problems taking off a wheel, here's why, and here's the solution behind them. My videos may be long, but they're rich in information. So you don't have to be like, okay, well, I'm trying to take the lug nuts off, Zade, but the lug nuts aren't coming off, or I got all the lug nuts off, and the wheel's not coming off. What's going on? You know, and then automatically a young kid or somebody that's really never tried anything before automatically thinks that they failed. It's not because they failed, it's because the instructor or somebody that's taking their time out to make the video didn't fully explain how to, how to do it, the problems that may come and what to expect. So I hope you guys appreciate my video. And again, if you do have any questions or anything, Please feel free to write in the comments box or my email is always on my is always on my videos now and you can contact me at any time. I always check my email. So enough of this shit. Let's finish up this fucking car and get done. Done. Another thing that you want to look out for and that I didn't mention when I did the other back tire that I'm mentioning now is when you're putting a tire back on or if you're doing brake work or anything. You see this right here? This little metal cover right there? That's called a brake dust shield. They're very sensitive and you can bend them really easily and they're really really difficult to unbend. Not saying that it's very hard metal or anything like that, it's just getting it straight again to the point where it doesn't rub against the rotor could be very very annoying to the point you're gonna to want to go to the dealer to go buy a new one and they're not that cheap don't ever bend these don't ever lean on them put your hand on it or anything like that because if you do you'll drive away and all you he all you will hear is <coughs> sound while you're driving down the road so be very careful it goes around the entire diameter So. Before you jack up the front of the car, what you're going to want to do is on the four-door Ultimus, the uh, emergency brake, which is the rear parking brake, is right here. You just give it a push, and just to release it in the end, that's all you got to do, push it again. Uh, on the coupes, I believe, they are on the center console right on the side. It's my little LED lights like them. I'll show you how I did them next video. Alright, so I'm sorry that it's nighttime, guys, but this is the only time I have to do it. Here's the front of the car. You could take your jack, uh, and you could jack it up on the cradle. Some people don't like to do this. I've never ever had a problem with it. I wouldn't do it with an old car, but we're good here. You could jack it up right on the plate here. Um, and if you go underneath the car, you may not be able to see this because this is missing its plate cover. I have to get a new one, but it may be covering it, but that's where the cradle is. It's right here. You can jack it up here, and again, what it does is it just lifts up the whole front of the car so you can bang out the two wheels and just be done with it. Um, I don't quite remember if that cover covers this. So, you just have to remember my situation is a little different. But if it is, there's two jacking points just like in the front, and it's on the right before the wheel on this side and this side, and you can jack it up there. Or if you can get your jack on. Lighting is the story of my life, it's always an issue. Um, but basically, here's the cradle to the car. 
if you can get it up over here this is the passenger side cradle side don't ever ever jack the car up on its oil pan or its transmission plan pan it'll definitely break crack or start leaking um, but if you want to do it this way you could jack it up on the cradle on either side remember if you do it this way you'll only be doing it one wheel at a time but if you'd like right here in the center of the car lifts up no problem and it's done all right so pretty much this is your average torque wrench um, and pretty much this is how you set it on the bottom this is like a keeper and when you want to change the value you turn it counterclockwise until it doesn't go no more and this is where you go you go clockwise this way to bring the value down and clockwise I'm sorry counterclockwise to bring the value down clockwise to bring the value up now the 2008 Nissan Altima in the service manual says that you're supposed to torque the lug nuts to 83 pounds I went online and checked that checked that out as well and there's a range for the years of 79 to 89 foot-pounds so what I'm gonna do is most shops will actually torque them down to 110 to 120 foot-pounds that's kinda why uh, if you guys saw my threads coming out of one of my lug um, one of my uh, lug studs it's because of years of being hammered on and off by air guns so here we go we're gonna look for which this is kinda dark but you guys kinda get the gist of it foot pounds it calls for 83 foot pounds and I am going to put 100 foot pounds on it so we're gonna keep turning it until the zero matches a hundred and we are at sixty right now eighty one hundred if you guys can see it the zero the zero goes right to a hundred then you take this turn it clockwise until it locks and here's how you do it here's the back wheel and we got the five lugs I'm gonna start off right here again you can start on any lug nut you want to I'm just in particular starting off here because this is where I'm standing while kneeling see how loose these still are one Skip one, two, oh jeez, three, four, five. Okay, do a check. One, two, three. Four, five. So I'm gonna go around and do the rest of the car. Guess what's next? Nope, not putting the hubcaps on. We actually have to go drive the car. We gotta go drive the car around the block, maybe once or twice. Cause guess what? After we pull it back in the driveway, we gotta retest the wheels for torque. Okay, tire pressure for this 08 Altima, as you can see, is 32 PSI all around. That's for the front and the rear tires. The 60 PSI is for the spare in the trunk. See this guy. This guy didn't have much in there. It's supposed to have 32. I think it had 10 pounds of pressure on it. And it's a new tire. And it has no nails in it, no screws, no nothing. So it all boils down to a cracked rim, which is usually really a common case of aluminum rims. But for steel rims, I guarantee you the leak is either coming from... I guarantee you the leak is either coming from an O-ring in the tire pressure monitor system or a bad Schrader valve. So we're at 30 pounds, two more pounds to go. 
and we can go for our test drive. Some cars, believe it or not, guys, it happens where they come loose. Not totally loose, but just a little bit. Enough to make you want to retorque them again and check every single car that you work on. So, with no further ado, we're going to get to work on putting the wheel covers together. Okay, so this is pretty much how you do it. Here's the front. Here's the back. Retaining rings are very, very simple to install. You just gotta follow. You see right here, see how it's got that like dimple? That is where the tire valve goes. So pretty much what you do from now is you locate, there's the hole right here, this indentation. That's for the tire valve. That has to go right where the tire valve is. So. Uh, no matter what I do, I, okay. So, we're gonna set that up right where the tire valve is. There's two different grooves. There's a top groove and there's a bottom groove. Uh, basically what the instructions say is you use the top groove for, I guess, a standard fit wheel and the bottom groove to get a tighter fit. So, I believe I'm just going to use the top groove and you're going to notice that once you start putting them in their spots it's going to start to compress a little bit more and there we go that's what it should look like that's one wheel completely done and remember it's got to be on the inside Okay. So that's one wheel. Let's get the rest on. Alright, so pretty much you snap them into place. Line up the tire valve. I know we set that in first because cars with tire pressure monitors, it's just sometimes they don't catch they catch on the ring right, but you guys gonna look crooked and you hit it. And the hub cap's on. Looks a lot shittier than my 20s, but hey, I don't want to ruin those 20s. When you pay so much money from that, for them, you don't want them destroyed. These are cheap fucking $30 hubcaps. <laughs> Let the weather destroy those. So, that's how you do it. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, basically, I just explained everything I possibly could for tires. And um, if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything like that, Feel free to contact me in the message box or here's my email. Thanks for watching guys and I'm about ready to go home. Have a good night.